it costs? Yes, ma'am. Well, at least it's cheaper than the last time I was here. Hey, you know if they're going to be playing any 70s music today? Oh, definitely. Awesome. 1870s. Hey! Ah, shortchanged again. Hey, Jimmy. Ah, forget it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I give you the grand roller organ. Thanks for coming. Price of admission certainly was worth the cost to get in. Thanks for coming, Mom. I don't think I could ever tire of hearing you play. You know, I, I actually studied theater and classical organ at Juilliard's for several weeks until one day a professor approached me, singling me out really, and suggested that I might be a good candidate for the roller organ. Doug's roller organ and the conventional 19th century parlor organ did have one thing in common. Both contain a set of bellows which had to be pumped in order to generate the air which was passed through the reeds to create the notes. Today we're going to ride the rails west to visit a lady who lives in an old train depot and she enjoys filling it with the haunting melodies of Victorian organ music. You know, Nancy, as a student of history, I have to tell you, I'm jealous. These days, a lot of people are being creative and they're buying old schoolhouses and depots to live in. It was the train depot for this little village. The people that bought it and moved it here, moved it here in 1937 and made it into what they called a modern house, which meant it had plumbing. Tell me, how did the uh, caboose end up in the yard? Since we live in the Old Town Depot, maybe we should have one. Then we got this idea to run it as a bed and breakfast, and we did that for 23 years. Well, I just thought it was really fascinating that you lived in a train depot, but we're here to see your organ collection, so maybe you can show us around a little bit. Well, be glad to do that. I like reed organs, and I'm always happy to show them off. Now this is what I call a signature piece. Uh, the physical size and the beautiful carvings, it, it kind of conjures up images of a Victorian era parlor. What is it that got you started into collecting these things? Well, I just kind of like to be able to play them. I like to have them in different sizes from different periods of time. Furthermore, I like how they're built. I do a little bit of rebuild. You know, this is what I would call a focal point in any room, but not necessarily for you because you've got a half a dozen of them or so in here. The reed organ, they started developing them about 1810. But in this room, the seven that are sitting here go all the way from probably about 1840 to about 1945. So this was a military organ. Yes, and it's blue, so it was made for the Navy. Now, Esty made most of them, and uh, Esty actually has a copy of an invoice that they requested that they build 11,000 of these for the military during World War II. They were used by the, uh, the chaplains of the military then, and they would go out and, and set up an organ in the field where they didn't have electricity, which now exactly. makes sense why they would use a pump organ. They were a lot less heavy than carrying a piano or something like that out. So this is the oldest unit you have? Yes, it's a preacher's lap organ, and it's very, very early in the reed organ manufacture. <laughs> pumped up the entire time, don't you? Yes, and that's the difficult part. 
These are called miniatures or child's organs, and they came in your standard Crayola colors, like the blue one. They're loud, and they're just a lot of fun to play. I really like the little ones. Now, how old are these? Maybe 40s or 50s. These are not old. You said these came in Crayola colors, right? Uh, this one is obviously in blue. What other colors did they come in? They had red and green and orange and natural wood. You said you did a lot of your own repairs on them, and I see you've got this one all torn apart. Maybe you could talk to us about uh, the different parts and how they work. Okay, this one was set up as a display model. The top part is your stop board. You pull, and that creates your different sounds. They're called stops and sometimes pulls. Under that goes the keyboard. Usually it was signed by the master tuner. And under that, the keyboard, is a lot of the working parts. This is a octave coupler. These are the little pitmans. They're nothing but little dowel rods. They press on the mechanism underneath that has a spring and that opens the cell with the reed in it and makes the sound. These are, are the swells. When you use your knees, that opens that and creates more volume. These are the mutes. If they're not open, you don't get any sound. That's what the poles operate. And here's all the little reeds in their reed cells. This is one of the brass reeds. It's the air moving across the tongue that creates the sound. This is a fairly medium-sized reed, and they come to very, very small. Yeah, this is really a beautiful top. Did they come with different tops? I mean, was that an option when you bought the organ? Depending on the model, it was a different case that would be called. Some of them are very elaborate. Churches like to look like they had pipe organs, so they have fake pipe tops. They're nothing but big fat dowel rods, but it looked like they could afford a pipe organ. It looks beautiful, yeah. Yeah. They are Moline cabinet organs made in Moline, Illinois by the Moline Organ Company, later became Peterson. That one is my favorite. These two were built in 1891, just two weeks apart. This one is a chapel, that's the, a regular household organ. Paid $20 for that one, <laughs> and a little more for that one. I was gonna ask you if you had a lot of money invested in your organs. No. You know, that kind of makes sense because you hear a lot today about being an organ donor. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I guess I have a lot of people that want to donate them. If I put an ad in the paper that I would take them, I would have gobs of them. They'd dump them on my front lawn. People just wanted homes for them. A nice they home. They couldn't stand taking them to the dump. We'll play you a little bit of this piece of music because it demonstrates the knee swells. The left knee just makes sound louder. The right knee is like pulling all the stops. The Reed Organ Society has over 500 members, but that's all the way around the world. There's probably plenty of other people that have these also. We have a website, reedsock.org. I am still looking for a two manual without pedals. Reed organs are like potato chips, you can't have just one. Got a collection that you think is neat, unique, cool? Drop us a line, send us a few pictures at CollectingSeriously.com. I appreciate the fact that you wanted to supply the game for the show, um, but I thought it would better tie into some of the, you know, the two collections that we saw. And I've got some vintage baseball games at home that probably would have made more sense than Operation. I mean, well, everybody knows what Operation is. You know, and you said to get a game that had something to do with the show. Right. And so, you know, we had a baseball collector and we had an organ collector. Organs. Hello? Okay. Organs. 
All right. Well, that's kind of a stretch, but um, go first. I go first. Yeah, yeah you're you're, you're, a, you're a guest. I'm a guest. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Repair his heart and charge your fee. Then thank him most wholeheartedly. Oh, that's sweet. Rhymes. It I does like rhyme. This. Yeah. Okay, his heart seems to be in the right place here. That's worth seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred, huh? Not in today's market. Patient has wrenched ankle. Take out the ankle wrench with a twist and tighten the money in your fist. Scalpel. Um, you know, while we're on the subject of organs, Nancy really had some impressive pieces, didn't she? Not. I slipped. Uh, that was that was a mulligan. Uh, won't happen again. You don't get multiple tries. It's the wrenched ankle. You know, it's always given me problems. When I was a kid, it gave me problems. It gives me problems as an adult. And that hole is not big enough to get the wrench out. Of. It's one of the, it's a $200 operation. It's one of the easiest ones to take out. And I do have the specialist card for that. Of course you do. Take the wrench and monkey around with the nuts and bolts down near the ground. Let me show you how to do that. After all, space is the limiting factor when collecting parlor organs, isn't it? And that, that little is operation disgusting. is worth $400. Ugh, I hate being the Pay bank. Up. Patient has overloaded bread basket. Remove a slice. The fee is nice, $1,000. I don't like this one at all. Good luck. You know, this game isn't even mine. It was a hand-me-down. I kind of figured that. I knew it was before your time. Do you know how you can tell that this is one of the original 1965 versions? Maybe it's because they figured it was impossible for anyone to remove the bread basket. So they redesigned the game to make it easier. Nope. In those days, apparently doctors were allowed to smoke during surgery. You want to start? No, I'll let you start. Okay. <laughs> we're thinking. Well, um... <laughs> I'm, you know, channeling Jim Carrey. To this day, I've never lost a game. I'm undefeated.